Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Let's all stand as we read God's word if you can. Revelation chapter 1. We're going to read verses 4 through 11 this morning. Revelation chapter 1. Young people, I'm sure, can stand. That I'm sure of. Uh, if here's an older person, I can get that. Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. If you have it, give me a good, strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 4, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits, which are before his throne, <clears throat> and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, Amen. and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. I look forward to that day. Amen. He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. Amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. I want you to notice that's a capital S. It means the Holy Spirit ought to control us. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest. Write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. I want to take verse 8. I was reading that, and um, just a couple weeks ago, to be honest with you, I was reading those, that verse, and there's a, phrases that jumped out twice in this passage of Scripture we just read. I want to talk to you on this topic, the character of God. The character Amen. of God. I can't help but read this chapter right here and get excited in my soul. Amen. I do believe the Lord's going to return soon. I do believe that. I don't know if it's going to be in my lifetime. I would not be surprised if it's not going to be in my lifetime that he comes. Amen. But I know this. I have a God. His character is a wonderful character. And I want to talk to you about that, Father. Take these next few minutes and may everyone... Just sit and listen. The Holy Spirit of God, would you move in our hearts? We need your help. I pray that those who are lost, help them to get saved. Pray for those who are saved. May their hearts be challenged today as we look to you. See you for who you are. Would you bless this time, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The one difference between our God and the world's God is that our God, I want you to listen to this statement, didn't just become God, but he's always been God. Amen. I'm glad that I don't have to have a God that, or I became this, because if he became this, there's still a God greater than he. Right. I serve the God who's always been, who always will be, and who is right now. Yes. You see, I serve a God that is alive. He conquered death. Are you with me so far? He conquered death. Jesus Christ left heaven, came to earth, died on the cross for the sins of mankind, was buried, and he rose again. He conquered death. I'm glad I have a God that I don't have to go to a grave to visit him. 
with me, you with me so far? I don't have to go there. So, well, my God's right there. You can go to the tomb where Jesus was laid and it's empty right now. You say, why? Because he's alive. I serve that type of a God. You see, I'd hate to think that I have to go and lay flowers on my God's tombstone and say, well, you know, he was good while he was alive. I don't have to say while he was alive. I can say he's good while he is still alive because he's a God. You say, how do you know that? Well, he lives within me. And I thank God I have a God who lives within me that when in the book of Revelation, John said, he says, I have that type of a God. I love it because when John looks at the book of Revelation, now let me let me just remind you, he didn't say Revelations. There's no S on the end. There's just one Revelation. Too many times we want to say there's Revelations. No, we don't have Revelations today. The Revelation ended in the book of Revelation. Somebody help me out there. And God, He comes, and John says, He goes. He says it was the. He says I was in the. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now I want you to understand something. John was not in the best of circumstances. He was exiled on an island, a little isle called Patmos. That's where all the criminals, they put the criminals there so they could kill each other. He's on this isle on Patmos. And yet, he still had the Spirit of the Lord there. He still had a good day. He, you see... I, I, I see people get emotional in church, get excited in church. My question to you, do you get just as excited about God at home? I don't just get excited about God here in church. I get excited about my God when I'm home. There's times I read my scriptures at home and I get excited about him at home. Why? Because he's not just a church God. He's an everyday God, an every minute God, an every second God, and that's who I serve. You see, he he is faithful and he's the first begotten of the dead is what John said. He's the prince of the kings and nobody compares. He is the only, only one, the Bible says, who can wash away our sins. They didn't say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the works of Alan Domley. Does not say that. Says We sing that song, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You say, why his blood? Because that's holy blood. Why his blood? That's sinless blood. Why his blood? Because it's God's blood. He shed his blood for you and I. I look at this, and when I think about this, when John describes God. Now, get this now. So put yourself there. Can you think about this? He's in this island. He's a prisoner. He's on an island, exiled to die there on that isle. But yet when he stops, uh, it's Sunday morning. He says, I got to be in church. It's Sunday morning. I'll have church right here. He said, I can't go to the church I normally go to. So we're just going to, me and the Holy Spirit are going to have church right here. And God, he got caught up into the heavens, and the Bible says, as he began to say, as we get to talk to him, he said, he, this is how he described him. He says, God, he says, is I am. He says, he's, which is, which was, and which is to come. I look at that, and I thought, what John is saying in this, and, and invita- the, 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 the introduction could be a little bit of time, so follow me around, then the sermon will be very short, so don't get too, don't get too worried. But, but I want you to understand, there's, there's, I look at this, and when John says, when he says, I, he's the I am, you know what that means? That means this, that God's the answer for everything in life. God's the I am of your life. He's the I am for your marriage. And he's the I am for your finances. And he's the I am for your struggles. And he's the I am when you're facing health problems. And he's the I am for depression. And he's the I am for loneliness. And he's the I am for boredom. And he's the I am for when you need a miracle. He's the I am. I don't have to run the drugs. I run to the I am. And he satisfies me instead of the drug that puts me up and then puts me down. Hey, he puts me up and never takes me down because he is the I am. Yeah. 
You say, I love my God. I don't have to run to a bottle of alcohol and say, I gotta get my mind off of this. No, I run to the I am and put my mind on God. And I realize I serve a God today. I serve a living Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he liveth no matter what men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, hey, he's always there. Why? Because he's the I am God. He's the I am God. When we get depressed and you're down and you realize you got a son-in-law. You got a song leader that wears weird socks. You got another assistant pastor that don't like fried chicken you get depressed. After all that you've eaten, you don't like fried chicken. Something's wrong with this guy right here. Get this. You've eaten snake, right? Any guy that eats snakes, not, but anyway. When I get depressed, and we all go through low times. We all have down times. And the world tries to sell you things to get your mind off the depression. But God tells you one that can pull you out of the depression and put you back on the high side of life. And that person is Jesus Christ because he's the I am. He's the I am. I get depressed and I say, oh, I've got, an, I got the I am living inside of me. We face fear. And I think, oh, how am I going to make it? I see the fear of life that comes and we, we, we say, I don't, what's going to happen tomorrow? And often I tell people, let's not live in the what ifs, but I, let's just be honest. I think a lot of times people put their step inside the door of the what ifs, but when you put your foot inside the door of the what if, would you stop? Would you look inside? Would you see you have the I am on the inside that no matter what your fear is tomorrow, there's a God in heaven. He can help you no matter what you face inside of life. Why? He's the I am. Yeah. There's times we need a miracle. A miracle. It's going to take God. The clouds have lowered. Life has surrounded us. Life has put us in the tight spot. But God says, look no further. When, you, when the world is around you, God says, I'm the I am. He says, I can help you in that tight spot. He says, you need a miracle. He says, I'm the I am. He's, he's saying, I'm not the I was. I'm not the will be. He says, I'm the I am. That means I'm right now. But then he says this. He says, the God which was. I'm glad he was. You say, what do you mean, preacher? I look back in the trials of life. He was there. He was there. I look back through struggles in life and I say, he didn't run. Others forsook me. Others criticized. Others left me alone. But he's the God which was. Amen. I look back at history and I see a God which was. Yeah. He was there for Moses when they came to the Red Sea. He was there for Joshua when he faced the walls of Jericho. He was there for, for he was there for, uh, he was there when they, when they, when they came to the Jordan River. He was there for Elijah when he faced the prophets of Baal. He was there for Peter when he sat in the prison cell. He was there for Paul when he was ordered not to say another name of Jesus again. He was there for all the apostles when they laid their head on a chopping block or they nailed him to a cross and they crucified the Peter upside down. Thank God he was there. He was there for the three Hebrew children when they walked in the fiery furnace. He was there for Daniel down in the bottom of that lion's den. I serve a God today. Listen to me. Listen. I serve a God today that he's an I am God. He's which was. He was back there when I needed him. But that's not all. The fact that he is an I am God. He's a which was God, but I want to jump a little phrase, but he's an is to come God. You know what that means, Brother Maud? He's already in my tomorrow. I look at my father-in-law's surgery on Tuesday, 
And he's already there. Before the doctor pulls the scalpel out, he's there. When I don't know what tomorrow holds, I'm glad I got a God that when tomorrow does come, he says, I've been there. I know what you're facing. He says, and I've already cared for it. I'm the God that was in your past. And I'm the God that is in your tomorrow. Tomorrow may not turn out like you think it should turn out. But I know one thing, as long as my God is in my tomorrow, what tomorrow holds is his will and is good because he knows he takes care of everything in life. I wish I could tell you everybody's tomorrow is going to be a great tomorrow. I can't say that, but I know this. I know that whatever tomorrow handles for me, that my God is there tomorrow to help me through whatever I face. Some of you are facing a doctor's appointment to find out about the cancer. But if the doctor says you've got cancer, I'm glad I have a God in tomorrow who could help us through the cancer. Some of you are going to be facing a judge in a few weeks. And you say, I don't know. I don't know what that judge is going to do. I can tell you this, if you face that judge and that judge doesn't give you the ruling you like, doesn't matter what his ruling is, your God has not left you. The world may leave you, but God is there and he can help you. And he's a God of tomorrow. He's there. Then I like about something else. He says he's an is God. <laughs> is. You say, what does that mean, preacher? Get this now. That means this. He's relevant. He's relevant. You know, styles come and go, do they not? I've watched since I've been pastor here. I've watched the, the younger generation get these ties and they think, oh, this is new. We wore that back in the 70s. What are you talking about? Huh? It's just coming back around. Uh, I see some of you guys wearing those little skinny ties, those uh, knit, little knit ties. Remember those little knit ties they used to wear? And, and, and you know, back then, sissies. But anyway, um, but they, they wear those little, and, and now they come out now. Oh, look at the new style. No, I saw that when I was in high school. You know, God was relevant when I was a child. He was relevant when I was a teenager. He was relevant when I was a single young man. He was relevant when I got married. And he was relevant in my young years of my marriage. And he's still relevant today. My God never stops being relevant. He never gets out of date. He never has an expiration date. Thank God I have a God that has no expiration. He's always there. He is what you need in your life today. Hey, thank God I have an is God. A relevant God. To a brother, Williams, who knows math, who's a little strange. He's relevant to you. You look at algebra, and, he, and God can talk to you in algebra. He looks to us smart people up here that we look at algebra and say, that's dumb. And he's relevant to us, too. He's relevant to the educated. He's relevant to the uneducated. He's relevant to the rich. He's relevant to the poor. He's relevant to the one that has a nice house, but those who rode the bus this morning that you live on the streets, but we brought you in and you're gonna get a meal, can I tell you, he's still relevant for you even if you live under a bridge somewhere. Why? I have a relevant God. You may be an OU fan. God help you. You may be an OSU fan. We won't go there. You may be an Alabama fan. Oh, I hear the booze. People need to get right with God. But I'm glad he's a relevant God. Amen. 
Y'all remember when Y2K came through? People were buying everything, thought the world was going to end. Computers are going to crash. The world is going to end. That's why I don't get caught up in the conspiracy theory. There's been so conspiracy theories in my life. You say, what's going to happen if it happens? Well, God will still be there. Because I have a relevant God. Now, that's all been introduction. Here's the sermon. Listen to me carefully. The fact that God is all of this for us means that I, as a believer, ought to be all of this for others. Do you understand? Look at me. We are the only picture that the world will ever see of Christ. They will never see him face to face. So the only picture they see of Christ is us. Now, am I picturing the God that lives inside of me? Am I that one that shows to a world this is what Christ is. Am God, God saying I'm an I am God means he's settled. Am I settled in what I believe? Am I settled in what I am as a person? Get this. Get settled. Stop your changing. Stop the up and down. Hey, be an I am to the world. Why? I represent God. Oh, I get around people. Man, their spirit, they're up and they're down. They're up and they're down. They're up. It's like on a roller coaster with them. Listen to me. Stop. Get off the roller coaster and get on the steady. I'm walk of life. Why? You represent Jesus Christ. Could you imagine me walking in this morning? Walking in. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's bad out there. I hope you have faith. You look at me, is everything okay? You know what I've got to do every day of my life? When that when inside I'm shaking on the inside, I've got to pull, I've got to stop looking at what's shaking on the inside and look what's steady on the inside. And I've got to let that come to the outside to show a world. I have a God who is, I am God and I'm trusting in him. I've told the story before. I was flying, I have my private license, I was flying from Needles, California to Albuquerque, New Mexico. We we're in Arizona. The, the, the monsoon storms come up in the afternoons in the summertime. We landed in Needles. In Needles, California, when I landed, it was 117 degrees when I landed the plane. We had to refuel the plane. I went inside the, I went inside the hangar. I'm not going to stay in that airplane. No air conditioning winds off. Went inside, and I said, man, this is a hot day. He goes, oh, no, this is a cool day. He said, this is a cool day. I said, what do you mean cool down? He goes, oh, last week's 134 degrees. I thought I died and went to the bad place. I mean, we got in that plane. Man, I mean, it was sweat just rolling down. You know, you got a prop plane, four-seater, four of us inside this plane, Cherokee 180. We try to take, we, I, I try to get, I didn't realize that when it's hot like that, they're, that, they're, that air is heavy. The, the, air, the, the airplane doesn't want to lift. It takes more runway. And man, I'm try, I had that thing going, and I'm looking at that runway coming. I'm thinking, we got to get up. <laughs> we got to get up. Where I'm going as fast as I, I mean, I'm doing everything. I told, I told the guys behind me, lose weight fast. We got to get up. <laughs> I got that plane up in the air, and we got up, got up, and just slow rise, and finally we got in some air that we could lift up and get up to about 12,500 feet. We got up there, and we're flying, and all of a sudden the storm came. Albuquerque Tower radioed and said Cherokee and they told us Cherokee and they told they, they read my number they said um, they said you're about ready to hit a storm there's no air there's, you're surrounded by storms no airport to land in they said we'll vector you to the lightest part of the storm we'll lose you on radar thanks a lot <laughs> but we'll still be able to hear you yeah. amen I got in that plane. We got in that. We, we're, we're, we get in the middle of that storm. That plane's being thrown around. I mean, we're just about, I mean, it's just all over the place. My dad was sitting next to me. We hit an air pocket that we dropped a thousand feet, and his, his brief, briefcase hit the ceiling, and I had two teenage boys in the back. They started praying, Oh, God, don't let us die. Don't let us die. They, I mean, sir, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. They, they, they thought we were going to die. We're, I mean, we're, it was like a rag doll. I'm there at the wheel. My dad looked at me and he says, are we going to make it? 
I lied. I said, yes. <laughs> what was it? I was shaking on the inside. But I had to look at what wasn't shaking on the inside. And I had to tell them, hey, 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 everything's going to be all right in my father's house because he's on the inside. We made it through. Oh, let me tell you, when you go through the hard times of life, you got to look on the inside and say to the world on the outside, doesn't matter what I face, I have an I am God and I'm going to stay steady in life. Amen. Now, can I go a step further? You could be the answer to someone who's going through hard times. God was there for you in your past. I find we're pretty selfish people. It's all about me, my, I. And, some, and when, you're, when you're living in that world, it doesn't matter how much people help you, it's never enough. Because selfishness just has your eyes on you. And I'm afraid that oftentimes we give the world a poor picture of Christ who lives on the inside. Because it's all about how I was treated. What's happening to me. How bad my life is. You think your life's bad, why don't you go to Ukraine? Look at the families that have been torn apart by a dictator who kills people ruthlessly. We don't have it bad. I'm not saying everything's easy. But we don't have it bad. And I think a lot of times, even though I look at these teenagers that are here, and I want these teenagers to always come in church every Sunday. I want them to see a preacher that shows that even in the tough times he's steady. And that it's not about him that he tries to help them and their, because they have problems too. Their problems are different than mine, but they've got problems too. And you have problems, and I, and I can't meet everybody's need, but I know someone on the inside who can. I can point you to him, and you have a Sunday school teacher that can help you, and a preacher will stop by every once in a while and try to help, but can I tell you, as a believer, I need to point to the world and say, I have inside of me a God. He's always been there for me. I'll be there for you. When the world turns against you, There ought to be a believer that's standing right next to you. It doesn't matter if you've sinned or not. Because I'm telling you right now, they still need somebody. I think of people who sit in prison today. Because they're in prison, because of the crime they've committed, many have made them an outcast of society. But they're still a human being. They still need somebody to be there for. Christ is there for them. And for us, I want nothing to do with them. Well, good riddance to bad rubbish. That's, that's not, I'm glad God didn't say that about me. As a believer, I'm just sold to the world. My God would be there. He was criticized for dining with the sinners. I'm going to be there and try to reach them and try to help them and not going to condone their sin, but I, I want to do everything I can to help them. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm the picture that they see of Christ. Yes. What am I painting? Yes. Can I say something else? If you live today as you're supposed to live, then you will be that which is to come tomorrow for those who you will meet tomorrow. You see, doing right today always cares for your tomorrow. So if I live right today, your tomorrow will be right. You are becoming tomorrow what you are today. So I live right today, so my tomorrow, I'll do it, I'll do it tomorrow. No, no, if you're not doing right today, you won't do right tomorrow. I do right today. 
Because I have a God. He's an I am God. He was. He is to come. And he is. Because of that, I need to be that picture. Because I realize there's some here this morning that are not saved. And the only picture they're going to see of Christ. What's this preacher going to put up? I'm not. I, I hate that. I, I mean, they don't get the best picture. You get a handsome one. But anyway. You're supposed to say amen on that one. No. I wish I could be a better picture. But Uncle Micah, all I want. So when people look at Alan Dahmer, they say, I, I've read something about someone like that. Amen. Amen. I, I've read someone like that. Right. Right. Oh, he reminds me of Christ. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. You say it in that a little bit, isn't that a little bit arrogant? No, that's what I'm supposed to be. Right. Yeah. There's times I fail. There's times that I wish I, I could kick myself and say, I have to go to God. So I'm sorry, I, I painted a bad picture. I want the world to see the right picture of Christ through me. So when they're going through tough times, I'm going to be there. I've got to get my life steady. And then I've got to say, I want to live right today so my tomorrow takes care of itself. But listen to me, and I'll be done. It all starts with Christ being your Savior. That's where it starts. I cannot be a picture of something who I do not have living inside of me. Can I tell you, if you were here in Sunday school, you heard works won't take you to heaven. That baptistry back here won't take you to heaven. This church won't take, I'm glad you're here. You could join this church, but this church won't take one person to heaven. You say, who's the only one that'll take me to heaven? Jesus Christ. Amen. You know why? Because he's the only one that died to pay for your sins. He's the one that was buried and he rose again Amen. and conquered. He shed his blood for you to atone for your sins. Amen. And every person at some point in their life, realizing they're a sinner, they can't save themselves and that they need a savior. They have to have that point, that time in their life where they go to Christ. They ask Christ to be their Savior. That was June 21st, 1973 for this preacher. I was a young boy. My mama showed me how to get saved. I knelt down beside my couch. And I said, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. So right now I'm asking you to be my Savior. And take me to heaven when I die. Amen. That evening, that Monday evening, or Thursday evening, I'm sorry, that Thursday evening, I, I received Christ as my Savior. Amen. Yeah. And Brother Tyler, he's been there ever since. Amen. Ever since. Yes. There's nothing I can do yes. that he'll ever leave me. Right. There are some of you here this morning, you listen to me. You need to get the first step settled. You need to get saved. You simply need to trust Christ right there where you are. God didn't bring you here for no reason. God somehow allowed one of our people to cross your path and invite you to church, and you came. And you don't know that you're saved. Well, let's get it settled today. Don't walk out of this place not knowing. Get it settled today. Ask Christ to be your Savior. Then if you're saved, I say to those who are saved, what kind of picture of Christ are you painting for your neighbor, your family members, your work partners, your friends? What do they see, Father? Oh, God, this morning, I realize today that we serve a wonderful God. I'm glad you said I am which was, which is to come, which is your relevant God. God, I'm asking you this morning, help us as your people to paint a good picture of you to those in our life. Please. Heads are bowed.